This is a presentation of BSRN, Box Studios Radio Network. The Power Play Post Show is on the air, covering minor league hockey since 2003, and now covering the Binghamton Black Bears, with news, reactions, and in-depth interviews only heard here. And now, from the Box Studios in Kirkwood, New York, here is your host of the Power Play Post Show, Bob Howard. And welcome back, everybody, to another edition of the Power Play Post Show. This is the show for June 27th, 2024. This is episode number 52 in season number 13 and episode number 437 in the long-running podcast that is the Power Play Post Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is 3.35 p.m., and we know the results of the expansion draft, so we decided to come in and give you a... A rundown of what went on today as the expansion draft uh, took place, started about 1 o'clock, and very quickly I had gotten results uh, from the owner of the Binghamton Black Bears, Andreas Johansson. He uh, messaged me and gave me the list, uh, which I then posted on Facebook about the same time as the Binghamton Black Bears were also posting the results as well. Now, of course, this means that these five players that were drafted by other teams now need to either sign with the team or something else needs to happen to get these players um, on a roster somewhere within the Federal Prospects Hockey League, or maybe they move on and they they do something else. And we'll talk about some of that here today. Um, Let me get into the must-reads real quick, and we'll get into, obviously, our main topics about Basically, the roster. What's the roster going to look like? So here we go. All right. The Power Play Post shows on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, YouTube, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Just search Power Play Post Show on whichever platform you listen to your podcast, and please subscribe. Please join the Power Play Post Show Facebook group. Just go to Facebook and search Power Play Post Show, and please uh, join our group. Check out BinghamtonHockey.net for all your Binghamton Hockey information and curiosity. And again, no guests today. This is just going to be me talking a little bit about what went on today. Now, because there was three new expansion teams in the FPHL, the FPHL, as pretty much every league does within pro hockey, whenever there is an expansion team that comes in, and there was three this year for the big, uh, for the Federal Prospects Hockey League, they do expansion drafts. And why do they do the expansion drafts? And that is to start to help to build the foundation of a team for uh, a new team that's coming in. It makes it a little bit easier. And then, of course, those teams that are Losing players, they get to protect players. And the Binghamton Black Bears obviously had the protections list. It's been out there. It was changed a little bit earlier today. Uh, I think it was actually yesterday that it was changed. They took off Colin Fitzgerald, and they put Dan Weber on the protective list. Now, they did that because Colin Fitzgerald may not play hockey anymore um, he may consider retirement. Uh, he does not want to play in the SPHL. He made it perfectly clear here on the Power Play Post Show that he was not happy with his time in the SPHL last year. And he actually flat out basically said, I wish I would have just been a black bear all season long. Now, it still turned out really good for Colin Fitzgerald. He did play, obviously, with the um, the Black Bears during the championship, he played 15 games, the last 15 games of the season, and then the seven games in the playoffs and helped them win a championship. And he was an important part of that. There's no taking away from that. Um, but let's 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 get through this. Let's break this down. All right, the Black Bears have announced the results of the FBHL expansion draft, where five players from the Black Bears have been selected by three other teams: Josh Fish, uh, Josh Fletcher, Justin Samaro, and Andrew Uturo were selected by the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Brody Thornton was selected by the Baton Rouge Zydeco, and Colin Fitzgerald was selected by the Athens Rock Lobsters. Now, I don't know if Athens had reached out to Colin and said, hey, we're considering about selecting you. Um, But there was that change, obviously, and they probably didn't know that he potentially may not play for them. Now, this brings up a whole lot of different things. Now, before the season starts, the players will need to sign contracts with the teams that selected them. If they hold on and don't sign, two things need to happen. 
or two things are likely to happen. Either a team can trade their rights away to another team, or if by a selected date in November, I believe it's near the end of November, if the player does not sign, they will be suspended by the league for the season. Okay, So say um, Colin Fitzgerald holds out and he does not sign with the Athens Rock Lobsters, you know, maybe because he's retiring or whatever. When that pre-selected date that happens in November comes up and if Colin has not signed with a team and his rights have not been traded to another team, he will be suspended for the remainder of the season by the league. Uh, I know it sounds like punishment, um, but there are reasons for this. Some of them make sense. Some of them don't make sense. So basically, that's what has to happen. So let's take Brody Thornton, for example. Brody Thornton was selected by the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Maybe he calls up the coach. The coach calls him up. They have a conversation. He likes what he hears. He's like, uh, he's told that, hey, you're going to be a uh, on my second line D pairing, and we have a lot of plans for you. Brody signs a contract, a PTO contract, goes to camp with Baton Rouge, makes the team, signs a regular contract, moves on, okay? So that could potentially happen. That is what the league hopes happens, right? They're hoping the same thing with Justin Samaro. He gets in contact with the Blue Ridge Bobcats coaching staff, general manager, the team, and everybody talks. They agree to terms, and Justin then goes and plays with them. That's basically the scenario that's going to hopefully happen for some of these guys uh, going forward. Same thing with Andrew Uturo. Calls up uh, the coaching staff. The coaching staff says, hey, we like you. We've already signed Justin Samaro. We want you to come in. We're going to have you guys play together. Uh, I know you guys played a little bit together in Binghamton and so on and so forth. Right, That's what the league hopes to happen. But there are some players, I was told by a, a few players that said they don't want to play anywhere else. They wanted to play in Binghamton. And they they don't, I think there's a lot of people that just don't like the idea of the expansion draft. But it, it's something that's a necessity. It really seems to be unfair. There were five players taken. Gary Ryan has spoken on his podcast about, hey, maybe they should uh, only let in one or two teams. This is a, a fast-growing league. This is a league that is trying to establish itself as the number one, the number one single-A hockey league out there, especially with everything that's happening with the SPHL. There might be more players that are going to opt to play with the FPHL than the SPHL, and though there is a hierarchy here, NHL, AHL, ECHL, and then some would say the SPHL. I think the FPHL could overtake the SPHL at some point. Now, do some things have to change in the FPHL to really make that happen? Absolutely. But players opting to stay in the FPHL instead of going up and playing in the SPHL, like a Tyson Kirkby, okay? That's a big thing. Kyle Stefan, we'll talk about him in just a few minutes. He has no interest in in playing in the SPHL. It's either ECHL or he wants to come back to Binghamton and play in Binghamton. So that says a lot right there, right? That the SPHL are going to not get players because they'd rather, maybe maybe Monroe is a success. Maybe the Monroe moccasins become a success in the FPHL and there are players that say, you know what, I don't want to go play in Fayetteville when I can play in Monroe and have a great, set up. The team owner wants to do big things with Monroe and just in general. He wants to, the, the owner of the Monroe Moccasins wants to get a NHL team in New Orleans. So you think about that. He wants to be a part of that process. Monroe might turn out to be a successful market. It might turn out to be something really great. And a player may opt to play there instead of playing in Fayetteville or in Pensacola. I know Pensacola is in the ECHL. My bad. Sometimes I, I, I mess that up. Either way. So that's very interesting here. So these five players have decisions to make, what they want to do, and how they want to handle it. Now, I can talk. I can tell you from talking to the team, there are a couple players here that were selected in this draft that the Black Bears want back and could trade for them. This could be a player trade, a uh, trade for cash, or whatnot. 
So just because these five guys were selected doesn't mean you may not see them again as a Binghamton Black Bear. There is things behind the scenes that I can tell you that are possible that could get some players back. You want to see Josh Fletcher again? You may see Josh Fletcher again as a Binghamton Black Bear. There could be a deal to be made with the Blue Ridge Bobcats, right? Colin Fitzgerald might decide, all right, I, I, I want to play again, but I want to play in Binghamton. There might have to be a deal that might have to be made between Binghamton and Athens to make that happen. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen, but I have a feeling these guys could. Now, so let's talk about the impact here. What does this mean? So Colin Fitzgerald um, obviously was selected by Athens. If he retires or if he goes and plays with Athens, maybe he signs with Athens and goes down there. Listen, it's a brand new freaking arena. Why wouldn't you consider playing for Athens, right? If you think about it, it's a brand new arena. Uh, they're, they're charging their fans a lot of money. But here's what we lose in Binghamton. Now, Colin played 102 regular season games for Binghamton, six goals, 45 assists for 51 points. Uh, But that wasn't really his mainstay. That's not what he was really great at. He was phenomenal on the penalty kill, and he was just a great defenseman, skated really smoothly, um, and he had a shorthanded goal in all three seasons that he played for the Binghamton Black Bears, and he is in the top five for games played for Binghamton Black Bears. Okay, He played uh, 52 games the first season, 35 games um, in the middle season, and then last season he played 15 games in the regular season because he played some time up in the SPHL. Now, in the playoffs, uh, he's played in 15 playoff games, I believe every single game for the Black Bears might have missed one in the first season. No, the first season they lost in the first round. So he played in every single game in the playoffs for the Black Bears. He has six goals, eight assists in the 15 games for 14 points. So he excelled pretty well in the playoffs. And uh, plus 13. And, of course, he had a shorthanded goal, actually a, a game-winning goal, in one of the games in the 22-23 season, right? So he's a, he's a defenseman. You don't want to lose to reti- for retirement or for, um, you know, going and playing for another team, all right? Let's talk a little bit about Josh Fletcher. First season here with the Binghamton Black Bears this past season, 53 games played um, and 13 goals, seven assists for 20 points, plus 13 Two goals on the power play, two shorthanded goals, did a little bit of everything, 111 penalty minutes. I think he had five or six uh, fights. He he could do a little bit of everything. Face-off circle, he was really good at winning face-offs. And then in the playoffs, seven games played, two goals, and uh, was was probably probably didn't play his best hockey in the playoffs. But he was still good on the faceoff, got two goals for the Binghamton Black Bears. And I think this is the one that kind of hurts the Black Bears a little bit the most. You had to protect the 12 players that you protected, including taking Colin off and putting Dan Weaver on. But Josh Fletcher is one that they really didn't want to lose. He was the leader of that third line along with uh, Justin uh, Samaro. So very interesting there. Uh, Andrew Uturo, okay, he's now this, this kid is a spitfire, played 17 games for the Binghamton Black Bears, three goals, four assists, seven points in his rookie season. He was a plus five. He played in only one game in the playoffs, but I'll tell you right now, what a spitfire. A lot of people liked him, and if he does sign with Blue Ridge, what a pickup for Blue Ridge. I will say, honestly, if he goes and plays with the Blue Ridge Bobcats, what a pickup for them. Let's talk a little bit about Justin Samaro, right? Parts of two seasons with the Binghamton Black Bears, 35 games um, this season, nine games last season. Right, it was probably one of the better pickups at the end of last season, along with you know Connor Smith. Six goals, four assists in that first nine games that he played with the Black Bears for ten points. But overall, forty-four games played, twelve goals, eighteen assists for thirty points, and uh, you know he could do a little bit. He he gave us game-winning goals and power play goals, um, but in the playoffs. Nine playoff games 
between the two seasons. Two goals, two assists, four points, uh, 12 penalty minutes um, there. And he was an even player in the playoffs. Um, talk about Brody Thornton for a second. Brody Thornton also only played five games for the Binghamton Black Bears, uh, but he was just coming along. And, and it's going to take a little bit of time for him to really feel his game, although he, I think, is going to do well. So if he signs with Baton Rouge, good on them. So those are the five guys. I personally think that one or two of those guys could still play for the Binghamton Black Bears. Trades would have to be happen. That is the job of Andreas Johansson and is the job of Brant Sherwood to figure out what they want to do there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the other news that I w- broke earlier today on the Facebook groups. Liam Anderson has plans to play in Europe this upcoming season and will play for a team in Germany. Now, I am not going to try to pronounce the name of the team. Uh, it will be announced. Uh, Tuz Harrisfeld. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it is a German for um, Region Legia North team. Again, I'm probably screwing that all up and everything, but he has plans to play over there. This is a great opportunity for L.A., and he is excited for the chance. He has expressed to me that he loved playing in Binghamton and playing for Coach Brant Sherwood, and if given the opportunity, he would play for the Black Bears again. Now, I also want to bring up and talk a little bit about Kyle Stefan. Now, I have said on my show, and I will reiterate what I said, he is a Division I player that played for the Binghamton Black Bears. He was given a chance by Brant Sherwood, and he really appreciates that chance. But you cannot blame this kid for going to an ECHL cap. I know which camp it is, but I'm not going to announce that because it's not my position to do so. Um, He's planning on going to a camp and trying to make an ECHL team. Now, he flat out has told the Black Bears he has no interest in playing in an, uh, for an SBHL team and that if he does not make the ECHL team, his plan is to come and play for the Binghamton Black Bears, which I think the Black Bears would be okay with. He has got skills. I think he's going to make the ECHL team. Um, so I, th- I, don't, I don't think there's that. Th- what that would do is just, Say we take the five guys off our roster right now. The Black Bears have 24 guys that they own the rights to, right? You minus five guys from the expansion draft, that brings us down to 19. If you minus L.A. for going over to Germany, that's 18. And say Kyle Stefan does make the ECHL, that brings us down to 17 players. That's not bad. The Binghamton Black Bears going into camp can have up to 40 players on the team. I don't think they will do that. I don't think they'll bring in that many people and cut that many people. I think uh, Coach Sherwood will do what he needs to do to have enough players to have good camps and everything like that. And we don't know if all players are still coming back, right? Do we know Gavin Yates is going to come back, right? He's played a long time. We don't know that Donald Oliveri is coming back. Right, I asked him the question. He didn't want to answer the question. He's, uh, you know, got a brand new baby girl. He's got Millie, their their dog, who they're trying to get a surgery to take care of Millie, so Millie can walk again, um, or have the ability to, you know, have quality of life, which is very important. So Donald Oliveri's got a lot on his plate. So we don't know if all of the guys are going to come back. We don't know if Matthew Ballard is going to come back, right? Matthew could go and try to make another ECHL team like he did at the beginning of last year. Uh, so there is there is it's going to be a little bit more turnover, and that's normal here. Obviously, in the uh, the uh, it, that's kind of normal here when a team goes and plays and wins a championship, it is hard to keep all the people uh, from coming back and everything. So um, it, it'll be very interesting to see what is going to uh, continue to go on. All right. So I think that's going to be it. I think that's what we're going to end this one on. And I I, I just want to let everyone know, uh, I appreciate everybody listening to the Power Play Post Show. Um, it's always a, a pleasure to hear from you guys and everything. 
please continue to listen. I, I really appreciate it. And we've got some great stuff coming up. We've got some interviews that we're going to be doing, hopefully, this upcoming next few weeks for you guys. And we're really excited about that. So, and here, the Power Play Post Show is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Cast, YouTube, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. Just search Power Play Post Show on whichever platform you listen to your podcast and subscribe. Please join the Power Play Post Show Facebook group. Go to Facebook and search Power Play Post Show, and we will post news as we can. Uh, check out BinghamtonHockey.net for all your Binghamton Hockey information and curiosity. And thank you to Rob Lopolis, our MC, John Petitucci, our musical director, and thank you to the fans for listening. And you, I am Bob Howard. Thank you very much for listening to the Power Play Post Show. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Power Play Post Show. Be sure to tune in next week to the Box Studios Radio Network for all the latest Black Bears news and interviews from around minor league hockey. The Power Play Post Show would like to thank John Patitucci for all the music you hear on the show. You've been listening to the Power Play Post Show.